Hello everyone, welcome in, so nice to have you all here with me now live on both YouTube and Instagram. For those who don't know me, my name is Philippe, I am the creator of Inside the Show, which is a program that I help performers and presenters create outstanding virtual interactive presentations and uh, masterclass shows and all of that. So today, um, the topic of today's live stream is how to impress an audience, a virtual audience on Zoom. That's what we are going to be talking about. And this is something that came up um, when I, I posted something on Instagram asking you guys what are the hardest things uh, related to performing or presenting to virtual audiences online. And you guys told me that this was the hardest. So just to get started, I wanted to ask you guys something. What is it that you are doing online that um, do you do virtual masterclass, workshops, magic shows, mentalism shows? What is it that you do? Do you teach? Do you sell? What is it that you do online that you are already uh, using the virtual space with a virtual audience or that you want to? So I just want to get to know uh, a little bit of uh, more about you uh, here with me today. So we have a lot of people from, I see a lot of different places in the world. That's super cool. Hey Alba, so nice to see you. So real estate, we have Nanji, magician and teacher. We have Lance, which is all the above, and one-on-one -on -one group coaching and seminars, virtual presentations and performance. We have Mark, uh, another teacher. And nice to have all of you uh, with, uh, with us today. And um, so there is a, a lot of things that we can be doing online that we can transfer the skills that we have and reach a larger audience. And when it comes to impress a virtual audience, I, I know that all of you want to impress. So what is the reason that you guys uh, think that impressing a virtual audience is important? Why is impressing a virtual audience important? Just type in a word or a um, small sentence. Just say, how, why do you think that putting the effort to create something that impress your virtual audience is something that will take you to another level? That will, something that will enable you to, well, I don't want to put the words uh, on, um, on your mouth yet. So I just want to hear from you what is it that you guys think. So let's start with Alba. So engagement, yes. Uh, engaging uh, with our, oh, let's do this actually. Um, let me do this. I want to uh, let's talk about impress, right? So impress. So why is it that we want to impress a virtual audience? So we have engagement. Engagement. What else do we have? We have engagement. Yes. Last impression. Okay, good. So we have lasting impression. All right. So what is it? Pretty beat it. That's a good one. Yes. Pretty beat it. So. A great one standing out awesome so standing out standing out from the crowd being memorable being memorable I will add something here too. I think uh, it helps us influence. Influence the audience. It uh, helps us amaze the audience. Amaze the audience. Bring some fun. What else? Clarity and instructions. Clarity of instruction. Good. 
And by the way, if you have questions uh, that doesn't have to do with what I'm talking, just send them because I will get to them. So Alba, I will uh, thank you for a question. I will be getting to this. So sending either send a message that are participating in this and also sending your questions because I want to do a Q&A at the end and I will be using the question that you sent. So uh, Claridge. Claridge. Cool. Awesome. So we have a lot of stuff here. Let me see. Mm. I will also add Inspire. Inspire and emotion as well. Cause some uh, some kind of emotion. If you are presenting, teaching, uh, selling, if you are if you want to get your message across, if you want to get the audience to listen to you, to trust you, to gain, to have credibility, this is what is very likely that you need these things. Closeness, that's a good one. It is very likely that if you are a performer, if you are a teacher, if you are a presenter, a magician, a mentalist, a hypnotist, uh, a teacher, you need all those things. Because it doesn't matter how good you are if you, you don't create these things here. You have, uh, it's, you have to be good at what you do, but also you have to have a good delivery. And impressing the audience will allow you to uh, harvest all these benefits here and what this does is allow you to tap into the one of the most scarce resource today that we have today uh, in the 21st century and you guys what resource is more scarce more valuable than the money and it's not time directly. No, it's not time. Attention. There you go. There you go. Look at that. I know there is a delay. So I know that uh, Lance uh, answered that first before I write it down. <laughs> so good one, Lance. Uh, attention is one of the most scarce uh, resources that we have in today's uh, century. Today's century. And when you have make uh, whatever you're doing fun, close, amazing, uh, credible, clear, when you are able to give a last impression and inspire, be in memory and influence and standing out, you have their attention. You, you, you collect, you grab their attention. And so this is some, something that is crucial for any business in reality. The attention of your audience is something that is crucial in, crucial in any business. And when presenting online, this is way, way, way uh, crucial and important. And there is, um, the first thing when I, I talk to people about, uh, about these, I, I often uh, get asked it, but <clears throat> when do I know that I'm doing too much? What if I'm doing, <clears throat> excuse me, what if I'm doing too much? Wouldn't I uh, look like I'm uh, showing off, right? So, so you have um, tension versus show off. This is something that uh, is very important for us to, to be careful with. Not to, when we, what is show off? Show off is when you do things to grab the audience's attention, but in a way that they feel as annoying. So they, when they are not receptive to what you have to share, when you, you ha share in a way just for actually your sake, when you, you do something and you say, oh, look, look how amazing this is. And you are constantly repeating that and for no purpose, just to show yourself off, right? This is grabbing attention. People will give you their attention, but it will be annoying and will be a negative 
uh, attention. So in order for you to not cross this line where you are actually showing off, instead of having the positive attention that we talked about here, being close, amazing, gain credibility, standing out, communicate a message across clearly, in order for, to, for you to achieve that, you must not cross this line of uh, showing off. And the way that you do this is by making sure that whatever you're doing to grab their attention has a purpose. And this purpose has everything that you will do here to grab their attention has one purpose. All of this, all of, of whatever you do, one purpose. And this purpose is serving the audience. The way, so what this means, when you are looking to impress, impressing will give you all of this stuff here. The reason you are, do, you are doing this is to get their attention by serving the audience, serving them. So, I'm going to talk about the things that you can do to grab their attention, to make people connect more with you and communicate, a, get a message across uh, with more impact, um, be it pure entertainment to, uh, to cause an emotion uh, to your audience, or if your disease to, to teach, to have them understanding and learning something new, whatever you need. I'm going to show you here several different ways where you can grab their attention and uh, by serving the audience, by making your content something that they want, they get interested. So for serving the audience with attention, you what happens is that you get them, oh, wrong end of the tip. <laughs> you get um, their interest. Grab their attention serve them well, and you get their interest. So we are going to, to cover uh, that, okay? So when it comes to online performances, when it comes to online performances and presentations, and when I talk about online presentations, I'm talking about inter live interactive virtual experiences when you are, for example, on Zoom with other people with their camera open and you are giving something, you are either presenting, performing, you are serving an audience. That's a virtual experience. So if you teach, you will be looking to teach online. If you uh, lecture, you will do masterclass and workshops online. It's a new opportunity to reach new audiences. And one thing that a lot of people struggle, a lot of you struggle, I, I, this is the number one thing that I hear from you, is the technology involved in creating something really impactful and really amazing. And I think the reason this happens is because when we talk about a virtual, uh, doing something impressive in the virtual space, often what we are thinking about is events, like a virtual event. So I'll just write it down here. So virtual events. So to create a virtual event, there is a lot of things that you need. And it's very technical. It happens one time and there is a lot of effort. But at the other end of the spectrum, there are the plain meetings. All of this is happening on Zoom, Google Meets, whatever the platform is. All of this is happen on, happening online to a live audience with the camera open, either virtual events or meetings. So when we talk about creating something impactful, the first thing that I, I, I bet can to come to your mind is the virtual events where uh, maybe you see him, Tony Hobbins with multiple monitors in his background, 
talking with a big production on a big stage uh, with their entire body appearing on the camera, these kind of things. And maybe if you're thinking on something smaller, you are imagining a team of people coordinating multiple computers and very complex setup. And the truth is, this can happen. There are various uh, virtual events where, well, if you're doing a virtual event as a big event, it's likely going to have a big team. It's likely going to have a, uh, a very technical, complex setup. So what people will usually do is they, uh, they try to do their best within the meeting environment. They use the, the tools that they have, try to make it as best as possible, but actually they are very far from these virtual events. But there is something in the middle. The very few people are tapping into. And this is not a replacement for neither of those. It's not, even the people that do virtual events, they are missing an opportunity to do this other thing here. And people that have skills, that have the talent, and can don't, uh, don't have the budget, or even it doesn't make sense to create a big infrastructure and for a virtual events, they are not even imagining there is something in the middle here. And this thing is I think this was a bad choice of, of pen because it's hard to read. I wrote one person. Hopefully you guys can understand that. One person. Virtual. Experiences. One person virtual experiences is the opportunity that I don't see a lot of people tapping into. And this is uh, master classes, workshops, shows, um, classes, sales, all those different things. Uh, that can be coordinated by one person that usually are being done as meetings. But no, you have the opportunity to, to do uh, an experience, something that is as, that is produced, that is, has quality, that serves your audience uh, well. And it's incredible because when you do uh, a one person virtual experience, let me type it right here, one person, When you're doing a one-person virtual experience, okay, a lot of people think that this is cussed. Uh, you have a lot of cussed or you, it's too tacky, it's too technical, it's too difficult, and you cannot possibly create uh, something that is really amazing, something that impresses the audience, that doesn't look like just another meeting. If you don't have the team, if you don't have the space, if you're not tech savvy, and that blocks you from trying that blocks you from experimenting learning what you could be doing and that's what i want to show you today all several different things that you can do which i'm going into even more deep detail in my master class after this live stream uh, you can go there will be a link on my bio you can go there and register to my virtual audiences master class which is going to happen on the 14th this month and i'm going to go in deep with you, hands-on, creating a one-person virtual experience. So the one-person virtual experience, the cool thing about that is that it's replicable, it's scalable, and it's... I'm going to, I'm going to be bold and say that it's cheap. And I know we have to invest in equipment, some webcam, we have to invest in a microphone. We don't have to get a professional camera. We don't have to um, 
create a super expensive setup. No, but we do have to invest on maybe a stream deck, which is this device that allows you to control the experience without having to use your mouse. I'm going to uh, show you uh, in a moment. But there is some investment. But let me tell you why it's cheap. When you're doing a virtual event, the infrastructure that you need to run a virtual event is very expensive. It's usage owns, and if you want to do that again, even if it's virtual, it's likely that you are going to have a lot of work. The opportunity that we have here to do one-person virtual experiences is to be able to create something that you can reproduce every day if you want to, several times per day without needing a team. So you do invest in your time. You do invest your time in learning how to put together these kind of experiences. You do invest on some basic equipment, but then you can replicate it. So if you take the money that you put into it and your time the, that you invested in learning how to do this, which by the way, in the masterclass, I'm going to do the masterclass, the virtual audience masterclass that you will find the link in my video. It's going to be uh, an accelerator. Okay, so it's going to be a full hands-on week where I'm going to get you at the end with a truly impressive virtual experience. So don't miss the, don't miss this masterclass because it, it, you are one week away from being at another level. Okay, so the time that you invest to the use that you put into whatever you're doing, teaching, creating masterclass, performing, doing magic shows. It's incredible. You don't pay again for every time you do it. So it's cheap. It's scalable. I just forgot how to <laughs> how to write scalable. Scalable. Okay, I got it. Scalable. It's scalable because you don't need a team. You can do it all by yourself. You don't have to rent a space. You can do that while you're doing other things in person. It's not risky. If you're doing, uh, you don't have to rent a space to maybe have you work or maybe not. You set it up and then you can replicate it anytime. And the time that you put into creating visual productions, because that's what it is. It's creating visual productions live. The time that you put to learn how to do that, it opens up other opportunities in several different ways for um, talking uh, to clients, demonstrating your capabilities and your, your services in a better quality way, uh, either because you can bring elements to the screen to demonstrate what you're doing, which I'm going to cover, what are the different things we can do. But putting your time into learning how to create a one-person virtual experience is going to open up an immense opportunity in your business, whatever you are doing online. So it's important to understand that between a uh, regular meeting, which uh, and there's no problem with meetings if you it's about a team discussing what they have to do next or discussing some topic, an actual meeting. But you don't want to, you wouldn't go into a meeting room and sit there exactly like you, the others, to present something with an audience. You you have to have a stage. Even if you are the only one standing on the room on the room to to talk and demonstrate and, and present, it's uh it's another setting. So it's not a meeting. So bear this in mind this in mind. And also bear in mind that you're not doing a virtual event. It's something because virtual events is not scalable and replicable. You cannot do, do one virtual event every single day or five virtual shows like some of the members of the site should uh, do uh, every day. It's not, it's possible. It has a huge infrastructure. And one person, it doesn't have a real uh, infrastructure. It's scalable, it's cheap, and you can do all by yourself. And all this is, is learning how to use the resources that you have available to enhance what you're doing online, your master classes. And this is the key to impress your audience only if you are doing it for the purpose of serving them. So let me uh, explain to you what are the things that I think are the most essential when it comes to impressing now a, a, an audience to create credibility, to create trust, to create connection. 
for me there is two things really that are the most important number one is creating flow creating flow for yourself if you, you are uh, you as a presenter must be connected to what you're doing it uh, the technology has to serve you to enhance your delivery but it cannot stand in the way if you as a performer cannot see the audience you cannot uh, you don't know if you're sharing your screen or you're not you don't know what they are seeing this breaks the flow and when you break the flow you create distraction and remember attention is the most valuable resource that we most expensive resource uh, that we have if you run ads on google or if you if you have it on your social media you see the statistics of your posts of your videos you're going to see that one of the most important the most important metric of all is the time how many people has watched the first 30 seconds of your youtube video how many people have watched the first three seconds of your reels everything is tailored to time to to value time so all these social platforms or the, the attention right the, the attention is correlated with time if they are giving you time it's because you have the attention so it's very close to each other so the attention is a resource that is so important that is the number one in the in all the social media platforms and if you have something if you are you, you just decide oh I, it's too tech i don't want to learn how to add a second camera to my setup i don't want to learn how to show something on screen I, it's too tech i don't want to do that what happens is when you are preparing what you have to present be it uh, a magic show or learning experience anything that you're doing you are not going to have the flow sometimes you will be on the flow and when you want to do something that is a little bit different like sharing a screen or trying to have everyone to see something that you want hear something that you want music enhance the experience in, in any way in order to impress to create connection when you try to do that if you don't have an, an environment that has created this flow for you you're going to get distracted you're going to interrupt to what you're doing your audience as well so this is why it's important to invest your time to learn how to put together truly impressive virtual experiences so that you can be on the flow at the same time that you are grabbing their attention so the key things for you to reduce to create the flow is reduce the friction you grab another pen reduce friction so friction for what whatever you want to do uh, with your audience whatever you want to show to your audience for, for example right now I am streaming to both Instagram and YouTube and I am able to bring my overhead camera with the press of a button I don't have to look at what I'm doing I can snap my fingers and the screen come out come in and I can snap my fingers and the screen come out I don't have anyone controlling this I have this little device which is called the screen deck that is uh, configured to, to do that so when I press a button it will bring the screen when I press it, it again it will hide the screen and this is reducing friction that's why I uh, the number one thing that I tell that you guys need to have is the screen deck and you don't you don't need even you don't you don't even need to buy this okay so you don't even need to buy the screen deck what you can do is use your phone as a screen deck you um because you can download an app and the uh your phone will access the screen deck so what you need to get started is a computer a webcam a microphone and the screen deck and all of these you don't need to to spend money to get started because it's very likely that your computer already have a webcam and a microphone 
it's very likely that you have a phone so you can download the Stream Deck app and you have a computer. So if you do have these four, you already can start. No matter what computer you're in, no matter what, what webcam you are using, you know what? You know why it doesn't matter what kind of equipment you're using? It's because the equipment does not correlate to a better quality. Of course, you can, the, the better equipment you have, the better quality you are able to get. But if you're just getting started, you don't, you will, you not know how to get the quality. You will not know how to get the, the, the great quality or, or get, get everything you can get from uh, an expensive equipment and you will be end up wasting your money. So what I recommend is that you focus on understand what are the things that can allow you to create flow with what you have. And you see what I just did that, what I just did here, I was talking and I look at my notepad and I thought, hmm, I will finish this sentence with create flow. So I positioned my finger here and I said, and this is what is important, understanding how to create flow with that. You know, this is creating flow. <laughs> That's a live uh, example of what I'm saying. And this is so impactful because they are giving you your attention. The audience is giving you their attention. And you are, I, I, I do honestly think of this as respect. I'm respecting their time. I'm respecting their attention. I'm showing them that I know they are paying attention. I'm giving them an opportunity to reconnect if they get lost because we are doing these virtual presentations with people in their homes in their offices and they will sometimes get distracted and when you have for example if i'm doing this with you right now with i'm writing stuff and if someone gets distracted for a second they can get back and they can feel like they know where we are they are not lost because the worst feeling is when you are in a virtual um, workshop, any, um, any kind of setting, you get distracted for, for a minute, you come back and you don't know what's going on. So um, even, even when you are, um, even when you are talking uh, to the audience, like we are here, I'm able, just able to bring the, the comments like I'm, doing right here is something that gives them a chance to to know what is going on and i'm going to show you examples on zoom on how to do that for example this is an example uh, right now you are you are looking at obs and obs is a software that allows you to do live video editing on on zoom on youtube anything anywhere it creates kind of a uh, a virtual camera. It acts like a real camera, but it's it changes. It, you can add graphics to it. For, so, for example, right now I'm adding uh, a graphic of a slideshow here. So I can either hide the slideshow, and I can show the slideshow, and I can move the slides as well as I'm talking. So this is all examples of something that you can do to create. Um, impact to impress the audience, but also directly connect with giving you flow. Because look, uh, this is you, what you're seeing here on the screen. This is OBS. So you're seeing an app that maybe you don't know. Maybe you have never seen this before. Um, but don't worry too much about that because it's pretty simple. If you have ever created uh, reels on Instagram, if you have ever edited, edited an, a, an image on a uh, software like Photoshop or Canva online, if you have ever created any kind of graphic like you drag something and then you drag another thing, this is basically what it takes to create these kind of productions. And I'm going to have a walkthrough on that on 14th of this month. I'm doing the Virtual Audience Masterclass week. week. The link is on my bio, so just go to my bio. You will find the link in there. Register. It's going to be a free hands-on masterclass where I'm walking you through how to create truly impressive experiences for your virtual audience. So don't miss that. You are you will be you are literally one week away to be in another position by doing this masterclass.
So this is one of the things. You notice one thing here. This is a, a different setting to uh, a slideshow that I don't usually do. I, I see people doing, which is having the 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 the, uh, the slideshow next to you, almost like a, a TV program, right? You can it remembers a little bit uh, a TV program, and it, the camera slides a little bit to the right and to the left, and then there is this slide. And you notice that these slides they are not um, the usual landscape ones, which is wide. They are very short. They, they are actually four by five, which just means that it is the size of an Instagram post. And the reason that I do that is so that I can have uh, still be on screen big while I have my slides here. Because I think for a presentation, I don't want people, I don't want the audience to be distracted by the slide. I want they to be paying attention to me. I want to be able to get rid of the slide anytime that I want so I can be focusing. I go to the next slide and then I can say, okay, so I'm going to show you guys my setup right here and I'm showing the setup. I just pass it to the next slide without disconnecting eye contact uh, with you because it's easy to control, right? And all that is uh, what I, I'm going to be showing you. And the, the part about being uh, easy is second point that I think it's very important to create flow, which is comfort. It must be comfortable for you to, to do all those things. And the comfort from leading, conducing an experience is uh, by practice. You, you, need, you do need to practice. You cannot expect to learn something in a day and just uh, be able to do that uh, when, uh, when you have a virtual audience. Practice is uh, an immense important uh, thing for comfort. And another thing that helps a lot with comfort is this guy here, which is the string deck. The string deck is uh, a device that can be programmed to act like um, like a lot of folders with buttons that you can place any action that you want. So for example, uh, a few actions that I have in here, let me switch to, let's see, there we go. So a few actions that I have in here is the press this button, I will bring in this light. If I press the middle button, I'm going to get rid of anything that is on screen. That's my camera. And this other button here, when I press it, I bring the audience. This is something very important that I'm going to be going more in deep in the masterclass, but this is a way to control uh, their attention beautifully because they feel part of the experience when you bring them on screen. And this is the only way. With a live video editing software like OBS is the, the only way that you can control when you're showing the audience or not. So you can create a moment where you are reflection, where you want to show them, have them looking at each other or a moment of fun. If you are entertaining, you want to show people having a good time, you press a button and they can see each other on screen. They don't feel like they are alone in their home. They feel part of the experience. This is impressive. Yes, and this is serving a purpose. This is serving the purpose of connecting the audience, of making them feel that they are part of an experience. And we are going to um, see that in depth, in depth on the masterclass. So don't leave it, uh, don't forget about it. It's on my bio, the masterclass, the virtual audience masterclass week. So um, yes, this is so powerful. This is so powerful. And Lance is one of the, of the Inside the Show members which, by the way, if you guys don't know, Inside the Show is the program where I, I really work with professionals um, to put together, to, to train them how to put together this level of experience that they can do with very, uh, a lot of comfort, like I'm talking about. The masterclass is going to be a full hands-on week. It's going to be free. And it's going to take you to, from where you are to creating something impressive already 
that will impact your clients that your audience will see and your clients will look at you and they will see they will say i want this person i want this person i don't want the other one they will not go um talk to you um look for you because of price they will look for it because of what you're able to do because when you are you you're just using what you as good what you have as talent or how good you are you're competing with a lot of other people that are very good as well at what they do but when you're able to bring up the delivery in a way that is comparable for you you stand out you create much more value for your audience and for your clients so this is the place that i'm going to get you on the master class and on twice a year i open the inside the show program which is a full year uh, where i'm working and evolving it with you it's um it's a small training in the beginning and then you are part of a community that is constantly evolving and creating new things to make connecting to the virtual audience something impressive and i only open this two times per year and i'm looking into open this uh inside the show the last time after i'm finished with the master class so also um if you are looking for that just come to the master class and i'm also going to let you know when inside the show open for enrollment and one of the things just to give you an example of uh why um why is it um valuable to be on inside the show is remember i told you that practice is so important the only way to get uh especially with virtual performance and people are not doing this guys the 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 one person experience this is something that people are not aware yet that they can do they can produce something that is valuable that they can produce something that is impactful without needing a team without needing technical skills people are not yet aware of that and how do you get the practice? This is very hard. One of the ways that we've uh, worked to make it possible on Inside the Show is we created a Zoom call. Look at that. This is a Zoom call. It's a live Zoom call with lots of spectators in it. And all of these uh, people here, except for their names, their names is mixed up, so there is no real names here. But all of these people here are members of the Inside the Show program that they shared uh, with us to have this real-time gallery. Then I put together a very complex system that I don't need to explain to you, but basically what this is is a Zoom call that stays open 24 hours a day. And with this Zoom call, we are able to practice. We are able to practice like we were in a real-world scenario. So with this call, uh, the members of Inside the Show come here and they practice bringing the gallery around. They, uh, they practice uh, several other things like uh, bringing a spectator to the screen, cycling through spectators so you can be talking to an audience. And this is coming directly from Zoom. And uh, of course, this is a simulation. This is not a real call, but it's here for practice. It's one of the most valuable resources that we have so you can practice at any time so if you are uh, not a member of inside the show what you need to do to practice is you need to create a call with and um one thing that i wanted to to, to mention is that you cannot create really create a, a an experience if you dissociate the platform that you are in from what you're delivering so the best platform platform for creating online experiences is Zoom. So, and you cannot really, if you are creating a virtual experience, you do have to focus on one platform. There is no way that you can create something that is not a meeting, a one person experience. A one person experience, you, you cannot create without uh, deciding what platform you're, you're doing. Meeting, yes, you can do a meeting on any platform. You can open your webcam and you can um, you can even using use some of the the resources that we have here, like bringing the the slides, some of the stuff that I'm going to share uh, show you on the masterclass. But the, to have a really an experience, a virtual experience, to make the audience feel part of the experience, you need to to know what platform you are in. There is no way that you can do that in just any platform. So if you are to practice on your own, you do have to have a Zoom call. 
with three devices, including yourself. Because on, on Zoom, if you are just with two devices connected, it, it is a one-on-one -on -one setting. The buttons are different. It's not the same thing when you go to a group. So when you have three devices, then you are in a group call and you will see a few buttons that are not available on one-on-one, -on -one, like pinning, spotlighting, and a few other things as well. So practicing in a real world environment is so, so important. Don't skip this part. You have to learn how to reduce the friction, create comfort for you, but also practice a lot. And it pays off immensely when you do it. And this masterclass will be a great opportunity for you to get hands on on this. The second thing that I want uh, to share with you guys is uh, getting a message across. So these are the two things that are the most important for me when you want to create something that impress your audience. You have to create flow and you have to be able to get your message across. And some of the things that you need to do to make sure that your message is getting across, right, is um, quality is the first one. So are they seeing uh, what you think they are? And when I mean quality, I don't mean expensive equipment. And I will, I will tell, I will, I will write this differently. I am talking about knowing what they knowing what they're experiencing, the quality they're experiencing, audio, video, and the resolution that you're sending on, on Zoom, knowing what, the, what is the quality that they are experiencing. Because oftentimes, it's not what you think uh, it is. And I have a whole video on YouTube if you guys want to, um, actually maybe I can just show you guys so you can, take a screenshot here. Let me see if I can quickly find it. You can take a, a screenshot of what video this is. Um, okay, I do have it here. So that's the one here. So, whoops. Okay. Wanna take a screenshot so you can um, Google for it later. It's called how to fix your quality drop and get the highest resolution possible on Zoom. And I'm playing with my hands getting pixelated because oftentimes your image is pixelated for them if you don't do a couple of stuff. So it's an 11 minutes video. It's a homework, guys. If you want to deliver a good quality, take a screenshot of this and take a look at this video later on. So knowing what is the quality that you're sending in is very important, but also knowing what they're seeing. And these may sound, if you are already uh, proficient with doing one person experience, this is something that even you will struggle with and everyone uh, can struggle with. Because you have to be aware that what you are seeing, what you look at is not the same thing that the audience is looking at. And thank you, Pedro, for posting here the link to the video. It will be... Um, on the description. So knowing uh, what they are seeing is very important. I was off, I was also on a, on a call uh, with a, it was a huge conference and there were almost a thousand people in the Zoom room. And the first thing that the, the speaker that everyone was waiting, it started with, with something uh, that really, uh, uh, bamboozled me and but you know this is something that a lot of people struggle with this was the speaker and i know that you guys a few of you guys can relate to this 
So this is the Zoom interface. You have the, the speaker and you have a few people on the top. So the, basically the speaker said to uh, almost 1,000 people event, I need, uh, and was a lecture about how to, how to talk, about how to be more communicative, more efficiently, how to give talks. So he started with, I need to see you guys. I need to see you guys and, and I need you to be with me, paying attention and reacting so I can know if I'm, you know, if I'm going to a good direction or not, if I'm reading, if I, I want to connect with you guys. Basically, they said, I want to connect with you guys, so I want to react. But he, he said next that he can only see five people on the top. So he need the first five people to really be with him and really interact. Okay. So this is what he said. And I, I went so, um, well, I, I, I was sad for a moment because there was no way that I could uh, help anymore. But this is something that help, happens a lot when we are performing. And if you're just getting started, you don't know uh, what they are seeing. And in this story, there was a few errors, a few problems with what he said. First of all, this order here of these people is different for every single one of them. So there is no way that the five people on the top of his screen could know which one were they. And uh, there was no reason for the speaker to be on this screen. He could be seeing the actual entire gallery with every single one. Well, it can go up to 49 or 25, depending on your setting. But he could be looking at all the different participants and click on the arrows to go back and forth in the other participants. He could be re really reading the room and creating a lot of impact, not just rely on five people that don't even know who they are. And that's what I mean with knowing what they are seeing. You, um, there is two ways on that. And this speaker thought that if he went to this gallery mode, he would change what people were seeing and people would be seeing him in a small space. But that was not actually true. It could change to the gallery view and it still be big for everyone else. So understanding what, what are people, um, what they are seeing at all times is, a, is key. You cannot deliver impact. You cannot create something impressive if you don't know this. And the other one, the last one is uh, knowing, um, being able to read the room. This is something that people tell that it's impossible on a, a Zoom call, on, a, on a, a virtual setting, because people will have their camera off, people will not be reacting, people will be distracted. Well, there is two sides of this coin. First, you have to know what is the setup that you need in order for you to, instead of be looking to yourself, be looking to the gallery. But also, you need to have a, in another window, you need to be seeing what you're sending to the audience. So you have to have these two screens simultaneously on your computer. You need to be looking at yourself and you need to be looking at the audience. And that's why uh, having two monitors is, at least two monitors is very important for a virtual experience. So when you know, uh, when you have this set up, then you are, you can read the room. Your next challenge is how to get their camera on, how to make them interact. And you can do that by creating things that impress. And the first step to that is understanding what you can do to enhance your message, to create something that is impressive, but that serves the audience to learn better. For example, one thing that can help you get your message across is um, do this right here. So second camera.
just like I'm doing here with you guys. I have a second camera on the top and this is what I'm using to as an overhead camera. So I'm able to get my message across in two ways. I'm speaking to you, but I'm also writing. This is serving this purpose. Uh, you can use audio and visual. You can use audio, uh, video. So if you are, um, if you want to have a soundtrack at some point to cause, um, create some effect to the audience to what you're saying, or maybe you want to have some music at the beginning of the session with a video, like uh, in the beginning of the session, I have something like this, and I have a music playing, right? And I had a countdown as well. So this is audio and visual being used to communicate a message to, to be able to get your message across. And this message is we are in the right place. It's just getting started. Um, it's grabbing their attention, getting them relaxed for the session. So all of these are collaborating for the single purpose of serving the audience. And one of the most powerful ways that you can do that is by making the audience part of the experience visually. Because when you are on Zoom, here's the thing, people, they don't see who, who you're seeing, right? When you are in the Zoom room, you're looking at these people and the order that you're seeing is not the order that others are seeing. It's not the same. But imagine if you enter a Zoom room and what you see is actually this. So now I can point to people and I can say, hey, how are you doing? And I can ask people and I, people can wave, I can look at them and I can, even if they are in different ways on the screen, when they are on the screen with you on Zoom in this way, which is using OBS, then everyone is looking at the same thing. The only way for you to create an experience is for you to be able to control what they are experiencing. It is obvious, but it's, that's the essence of that. You have to be able to control what they are experiencing. And this is a way for you to make the audience feel part of the audience, which also is uh, one of the things that you can do to communicate your message across. You can show everyone each other and they can, they can see what other people are experiencing of, of your session. This change, this makes them feel that other people are also going through the same thing as they. And if you are doing a magic show, this is going to our mentalism show, you want to impress them, they are going to see each other impress it. If you are doing a lecture and impact, carrying an impactful message, they are going to see each other uh, be impacted by it. And you are able to control, you're able to look at, you, uh, at your screen, you are always seeing the gallery. And you are deciding when you want they uh, each other they to see each other with the pre all everything with the press of a button everything with comfort which you get with practice. So making the audience the audience part of the experience. So these are a few of the things that you can do to getting your message across. And when you start to do this, you start to create something that impresses and at the same time that stands you out, that wants people to come back and have more of what you have to share because you are delivering a great content, you're delivering a great presentation performance, but also you are delivering it in a way that they can appreciate more. So that's the impact of putting the time to learn how to create this kind of virtual experiences on Zoom. And the next step for you to do that is going to be in a few, uh, I think in a one week or so, less than two weeks, which is going to be the Virtual Audiences Masterclass Week. Uh, if you haven't registered yet, I'm going to share with you here. So this is the Virtual Audience Masterclass Week website. The link is on my bio. So if you come here, 
it's going to be a free event happening on the 14th to the 18th of November. It's a full hands-on event with me. It's going to be a mixture, a mix of live sessions and on-demand sessions. And also I'm going to open up a lot of resources that are exclusive to the Insider Show community, including the Zoom simulator, which is the Zoom call with a lot of participants. So this will uh, be a time for you to practice and really tap into something that is really exclusive and uh, get to a point that is very different, uh, that is that will really impact your clients, that will really, really impress your clients. And yeah, and uh, Lance was talking about uh, what I shared uh, in a few minutes ago, which is uh, it's very important to see the audience. If you cannot see the audience, you cannot connect with the audience. And it's not what you say, but how you say it. It's not what you present, but how you present it. Yep. Yep. Two messages, the same message can be understood in two different ways. And the same message can have more or less impact. The same message can achieve its purpose or it can fail. So it, it doesn't matter if you have a great message. If you don't have an audience, pay attention to what you're doing. If you don't have an audience that is has decided that they can trust you their time, right? Because the thing about attention is that they are asking themselves, is it worth my time? You guys are asking yourself, is it worth my time being here right now all the time, every single time? You guys are making this question. So this is what is important on putting the time and effort to learn how to create this virtual experience. And I will tell you, it's not difficult and I'm going to prove it on my virtual masterclass. So that's it uh, for today. And if you haven't yet, sign up to the masterclass and I will see you guys soon. So I'm go just going to open it up to a q and If you have a question, I have one from Alba at the beginning. And if you guys have any question that you want to ask me, I'm going to, I'm able to stay a little bit more, but say then now because there is a delay on Instagram. So I might miss your question if you don't ask it right now. Okay. So let me go to Alba. Okay. So I would like to know how you just split the cam the camera uh, to show your writing. That's great because this is exactly what I'm going to teach on the master class. This is one of the things that you're going to be able to, uh, to get out of the week up and running. And it's going to be, we're going to give you both. I'm going to either both teach you how to do this. And we are going to give you the support to make sure that you can do this because we are opening part of the community to, to help you, um, do that. And we'll have a lot of resources that will make it much easier. All right. So I think we don't have any questions anymore. All right. So thank you everyone. Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you for giving me your attention and I look forward to see you guys in the next live stream. Bye-bye.